we're going to use a GIA board for our next lesson to talk about slope. And there are many ways that you can create your own GIA board. You can take a block of wood and put nails in it so that you have like a five by five, five rows of nails and use rubber bands. Uh, you can use graph paper. You can use dot paper. Or you can buy a GIA board for your classroom that looks like this and use rubber bands. So we're going to talk about slope and how we can teach students about slope with the GIA board. So if I have a line that begins here and goes to here, this line has a positive slope because it's rising as we look at it going left to right. So if I have a rise, one, two, three, and a run of one, two, three, then I have a slope of three over three. So I look at the rise and the run. Rise over run, three over three. So this line has a slope of one. Now, if I take this line and I move it here, this line is falling. If it falls, it has a negative slope. So if I look at the rise and the run of this line, I have to remember it's negative because it's falling. But the rise is 2, and the run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's negative 2 over 5. So I'm creating a right triangle when I'm looking at the slope of a line. Now, if I make a line that is vertical, It has a rise, but it does not have a run. So the run is zero, which puts zero as a denominator, and that is a dreadful sin. Zero in the denominator is undefined. So when we have a vertical line, we say that the slope of it is undefined. If we have a horizontal line, we have no rise, but we have run. One, two, three, four, five. So it's zero over five. So the slope of a horizontal line is zero. So those are the four situations that can occur when you are dealing with slope. You can have a positive slope, a negative slope, an undefined slope, and a zero slope. The steeper the line is, notice that this line is more steep than this line. So you can expect the slope of this line to be greater. So look at my rise. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and my run is 2. 
So 5 over 2 would be the slope of this line, whereas this line has a slope of 2 over 2, or 1. So this slope is greater because it is steeper. The slope is less because it is not so steep. Notice this one is even less because it is very gradual. Now a wheelchair ramp has a slope of 1 to 12. Let's see if we can see what that looks like. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Not enough pegs on here, but we can do a 1 to 10 slope. And we see about what it looks like. It would be less steep than this line is here, a 1 to 12. If you have a graph <coughs> already made in a coordinate system, then we can create our slope by simply counting a rise over run. So if I begin at a point and end at a point, I can see the rise is 1 and the run is 4. So the slope would be 1 fourth. In this example, I have a rise of 1, 2, 3, 4, and a run of 4. So this has a slope of 1. And notice again, the smaller the slope, the less steep that it is. Let me remind you that a horizontal line has no rise but it does have run. 0 over 4 is acceptable, so this has a slope of 0. This line is falling, so it has a negative slope. So 2 over 4, or negative 1 half. Now, if we have parallel lines, parallel lines will have the same slope. So if you're trying to judge whether two lines are parallel or not, all you have to do is check out their slope. All right, I would like for you to determine the slope of these two All right, let's check to see that you got it right. A rise is negative 4, and our run is 6. Negative 4 over 6 is negative 2 thirds, and this would have a slope of 0. So when we're looking at parallel lines, if I want to judge whether these two lines are parallel, I simply look at their slope. If I start at a point and end at a point, looking at rise over run, the slope of this line is one half. If I start here and end here, I see rise over run, the slope is one half. Therefore, that makes those lines parallel.
on a piece of graph paper. I'm going to give you the coordinates of these two lines. I'm not sure that you can make that out just by looking uh, at the video. So this has a coordinate of negative 2, 0, and this has a coordinate of 0, 2. Negative 2, 0, and 0, 2. This line has a coordinate of 6, 0, and 3, 5. What I would like for you to do is to make a line parallel to each of those. So make a line parallel here and make a line parallel here. Now there are many different ones that you could do, but um, I want you to do this on graph paper and you will upload that into Blackboard. If we are looking at the slope intercept form of an equation, it's written as y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y intercept. So if I give you an equation like y equals 3x plus 4, it's very easy to graph that equation. Because 4 is the y-intercept. Now that means it's where it intersects the y-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0, 4 is the y-intercept. The slope is 3. So that means that from the y-intercept, you're going to go, when you have a slope of 3, that means the same thing as having a slope of 3 over 1. So I would go from the y-intercept up 3 and write 1. And two points name a line, therefore that's all that I have to do. Now let's look at another one. What if I had y's negative 3 fourths x plus 5? Well, the graph. The y-intercept is 5. And I'm going down 3, right 4. So beginning at the y-intercept, I'm going down 3, right 4. And that makes the graph, which is showing the line falling because it has a negative slope. Now, if we have an equation of y equals 5, this will be a horizontal line. So the graph of that uh, 
yikes. The graph of that will be a horizontal line at 5. Now if I have x equals a number, that's going to be a vertical line at 3. So, having an equation in slope-intercept form makes it very easy to graph. Having y equal to a number means it's a horizontal line. Having x equals a number is a vertical line. I would like for you, on graph paper, to graph this equation. And this one. So you have four equations to graph.